Hi guys! Welcome to the first out of three episodes of this Endkeeping Basics series. After watching these three videos, you will know all of the basics of Endkeeping, allowing you to start your Endkeeping journey the right way. Some aspects of Endkeeping, like what food to give your ants, for example, have been covered in some of my other videos, so I won't be going over that again. Instead, I will redirect you to the appropriate videos. What is a test tube setup and why do we need them? How to make one yourself? How long should I keep my ants in a test tube setup? These are all questions we'll go over in this episode, so stay with me until the end as this is a very important part of ant keeping. Before we start talking about the test tube setup, perhaps we should go over the different ways of getting yourself a queen ant. Basically, there are three ways of getting a queen ant. Finding a queen during the nuptial flights. In the northern hemisphere, they typically happen during the summer months. Male and female elates mate. The males die and the queens fall back on the ground and go on to found their colony. And this is when you catch them and put them in a test tube setup purchasing a queen ant. This is probably the easiest way of getting a queen ant or a colony. There are plenty of sellers all across the world that offer ants online. The only difficult part here is to know what species to choose. If you guys live in Europe and want to know what I consider to be the most reliable online shops, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. Participating in one of my giveaways. That's my favorite way of doing it. Now, let's get to it, shall we? What is a test tube setup? Well, this is fairly self-explanatory. The central part of this setup is, very obviously, a test tube. They come in various sizes, but for me, the 16 or 18 mm of diameter are the go-to. The test tube setup is made of two parts. The first half is the water reservoir, and the second one, the nesting space. Those two parts are separated by a cotton ball. Why do we need a test tube setup? When queen ants land on the ground to start their colony, they will choose a location and create a nuptial chamber. The test tube setup is basically an artificial nuptial chamber. It will provide the three things a queen needs to start a colony. A safe space protected from the dangers of the outside world. Humidity needed by the eggs and larvae to develop and by the queen to drink. Darkness. That's not absolutely necessary, but drastically improves the queen's chances. How to make a test tube setup? It's actually pretty simple. Let me show you. Fill your test tube with some water. I recommend using bottled water, as tap water sometimes contains high doses of chlorine, which is harmful to ants. Keep in mind that the more water you put in a test tube, the longer it will last. As I mentioned in a previous video, ants love confined spaces, so do not hesitate to fill up two-thirds of the test tube with water. Take a bit of cotton and push it in the opening of the test tube. I recommend you get a bag of cotton, rather than cotton pads. It needs to be tight, but not so tight that you have to force too much for it to go in. Then, using a paintbrush or the back end of a pen, swiftly push the cotton so that it's in contact with the water. A useful tip is to notice the slight change in coloration when the cotton gets wet. See here? It gets slightly darker. Ideally, you want this darker bit to come close to the end of the cotton but not to reach it, as it would then be completely soaked. Don't worry, practice makes perfect. The more test tube setups you will make, the easier it will get, and the better they will be. Get another bit of cotton that you will use to block the end of the test tube. You don't want this one to be too tight, as you want to provide sufficient air circulation. 
those three steps are the essential ones, but I like to be thorough, so here are a couple other tips that will provide your queens with an even more comfortable environment. It's best to wrap the test tube in foil. This will keep the queen in the dark, avoiding stress caused by light changes. And don't need sunlight, so don't worry about them lacking vitamin D. I always make sure that the test tube is stable and isolated from vibrations. For that, you can use two things that pretty much everyone has in their house, blue roll and bubble wrap. I know, it sounds like the beginning of a really bad joke, but stay with me, I'll show you. I use an empty loo roll or kitchen paper roll to make a stand. Simply cut a piece of the roll and do a triangular cut in it. Here we have a test tube stand. Tape the bubble wrap to the surface where you want to keep your queen. And simply rest the setup on it. That's it, your queen's cozy and safe house is made. How long should I keep my colony in the test tube setup? As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, one of the most common mistakes in end keeping is moving your colony in the formicarium too soon. If you haven't watched this video, I recommend you click here as it will be of great help if you're just starting in the hobby. So, basically, keep your ends in a test tube setup for as long as possible. If your test tube runs out of water or gets too dirty, try to offer them a new one. If the test tube has become too small for a colony, then you might offer them their first small nest. I'll explain all you need to know about ant nests in the third episode of this series. And that's it! You know pretty much everything there is to know about the test tube setup and how to take your first step on the ant keeping planet. Did you find this video helpful? If so, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a thumbs up. We've gone over 100 subscribers, that's amazing guys! Thank you so much! As promised, I'll be organizing another giveaway very shortly, so stay tuned during the next couple days. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day! A nice evening, a nice night or whatever, just have a nice one. Thank you for being an enthusiast.